Elspeth's mysterious, powerful, and a bit creepy. In this video, we'll be delving into Elspeth von Drac, deathly, reclusive, and the wielder of the dragon laser. To explore who she is, her mechanics, and new units you can expect to see as part of the Thrones of Decay DLC. Her name echoes throughout the lands of the Empire, her story shrouded in mystery. Yeah! Elspeth von Draken is of course our seemingly ageless personal protector of the Empire. Not that anyone believes her of course. Her starting location lies in the heart of Wissenland and Nuln. We're jumping into turn 5 of our Immortal Empires campaign, where the severed rags of our homelands have been delicately sewn back together to somewhat resemble their former glory. We've no immediate threats around us, so we begin the delightful process of figuring out who to target next. The big patch of undead land in the east probably needs turfing over, so we'll begin an expedition over to Sylvania. It helps that Elspeth receives no attrition from vampiric corruption, of course. And they didn't see that coming. For Sigma and Verena. Elspeth provides the fantasy of the kind of morally grey saviour of the Empire, doesn't always do things the, the way that people might like, but she does get the job done. The way Elspeth fits into the Empire roster is that she is a spellcaster character in the same way that Gelt is, but just uh, has a different lore of magic. She also rides a Carmine Dragon, which is a monstrous mount, and not many spellcasters in the Empire roster actually field them. A quick look around our neighbourhood and we can see a few changes. For example, Helmgard now starts under the control of Karl Franz giving him a little more breathing room to try out his new elector count updates. And down south, Gelt seems to be missing. He now starts in Grand Cathay, fighting alongside Zhao Ming, with new updates to his campaign also. We've covered these changes in our Thrones of Decay blog posts, which you can find in the links below. For now, back to Elspeth. We've been utilizing the Imperial Gunnery in the Imperial Gunnery School window, and by applying our schematics we've collected after battles, we've been able to upgrade our units. There is a nice selection of upgrades across the munition units, but we're currently focusing on our artillery, because who doesn't have explosions? So far in Tier 1, we've added in additional projectiles to our Hellstorm rocket battery, and, my personal favourite, improved the reaction time for the Hellblaster volley guns by removing the Cannot Run attribute, increasing their speed, and improving acceleration and deceleration through the Wayfarer ability. Not bad for a single upgrade. These are just our early upgrades as well, and as we utilise the gunnery school, we increase our tier, unlocking further, more powerful upgrades and access to new units. With Elspeth being in charge of Wissen and the Null, we knew that we had to have the Imperial Gunnery School in there. The mechanic kind of writes itself, an experimental weapon school and core to the Empire. It adds to the player experience by allowing you to push the limits of what your gun units could normally do. And it gets spicy at the end. For Sigma and Verena. At this stage, our army is primarily made up of foot soldiers. Our Null Ironsides are the front line of our force. And with more advanced armor, melee capabilities, and missile strength than our standard Empire gunners, we'll bring them right in to weaken the enemy's front line, before bringing back in our swordsmen to take on the bulk of the melee. We're in the midst of taking the walls. We'll position our ranged units on top of them to take advantage of the height. And I think we'll target our artillery on this section, to make things a little less bottlenecky. Vlad has joined the fray, and call me over the top, but while he's caught up, I'm just going to target all my artillery on him. And let's mop up the stragglers using our Hockland Long Rifles. The Hockland Long Rifles is kind of like fan favourite weapon from the tabletop. They're long range, they're armour piercing, and they can really strike targets from a distance. Both the Ironsides and the Hockland Long Rifles sit either side of the handgunners in terms of where they sit on the roster. It's really you take what tool you need for the job to get the job done. It's turn 20. Our armies are bespoke and our power is unquestioned. But our mantelpiece is empty and could do with some trinkets. The Dark Lady of Nuln is a bit of an antiques collector. 
Magical arcane artifacts entrance her, as she yearns to understand the law of death in its entirety. In her quest to complete her collection of artifacts though, she needs a quick way to travel. Gardens of Moor can be built in any friendly or neutral Empire-owned settlement, allowing us to create a network of pathways for Elspeth to transverse. We've set up a black tower near our capital of Nulm, so within a couple of turns, we can return to and assist our most important settlements without fear of travelling too far. Gardens can be used to construct unique buildings to provide extra settlement garrisons, unlock units, and boost your abilities in campaign and battle. Be sure to keep in mind the cooldown after constructing each garden. It's important to plan your pathways carefully. We introduced the Gardens of Moor mechanic to really tap into the moor of Elspeth, of this uh, mysterious woman that goes between Black Towers and her relationship with the Cult of Moor. From a gameplay side, it really helped her to zip around the Empire and protect them in dire straits. Rather than rely on these gardens too much, let's make sure our homeland is well defended by utilising our Master Engineer Lord. Compelled by good sense. So hailing from the Engineers Guild, the Engineers are kind of these master craftsmen who specialise in creating all the weird and wonderful weapons that the Empire use to dispatch of their enemies during battles. The difference between the Engineer and the Master Engineer is the Engineer is a hero and wields a repeater rifle, and he can use the ability Mercurial Shot from the Tamarkan book. The Master Engineer wields a grenade launching blunderbuss, and both units can also call down the fearsome Pigeon Bombardment. Cuckoo Boom is the rallying cry of the Engineers, I believe. Alongside them, we have a new legendary hero. Theodore Bruckner, known as the Titan Headsman, is this kind of champion of Null. The Justicar who kind of fights enemy characters. He is also the only character that is mounted on a Demogriff. It's turn 40. Elspeth has vanquished Festus and his Fecundite faction. But our neighbours of Nuln grow irritable of our conquests. The Wargroves of Woe have turned our forests against us. It may be because we discovered the Nemesis Crown and after taking it for ourselves gained diplomatic penalties for all factions nationwide. Whoops! Elspeth can't help herself. Much to Elspeth's joy, the Nemesis Crown is a free update in patch 5.0. Within our Imperial Gunnery School though, we've reached Tier 3, unlocking the Amethyst Panel. We can now purchase, recruit, and upgrade Amethyst units, taking advantage of their magically augmented munitions. Amethyst artillery is also available to us now, turning the tide on Dreitcher's invasion. Better get collecting those schematics. It will rain death. The Amethyst Armoury bring that combined focus of guns and magic which you don't normally see within the Empire and they are very potent especially with all the combined bonuses you can get for the Amethyst units and the regular counterparts. Some of the later additions include dropping a giant purple sun. The Nemesis Crown sits heavy upon Elspeth. As we dominate, we make more and more enemies with our neighbours, but the temptation for Elspeth is too much. So while we have the option to drop it off at the nearest thrift store, I think we'll keep it. I protect the Empire. We're winning the war. But Dreiter has made a bold move for her swan song, stepping forth into our lands to attack our capital of Nulm. We can't travel to a besieged settlement using the Gardens of Moor, but Grunberg? That ain't too far away. Betwixt the Veil. Right, I can't handle an army of 40 units, so Elspeth's backup is going to come in as and when she's needed. Ready for war. Our garrison can hold off the first wave of Wood Elves, but looks like Dreitcher's on her way with her main army. Elspeth arrives atop her Carmine Dragon. Let's boost that morale. Don't take this. As we lose units of our garrison, it frees up space for more of Elspeth's more qualified soldiers to arrive as backup. Oh, wait, those are my cannons. Oh, well. My Knights of the Black Rose will avenge them. 
The Knights of the Black Rose are this sword and board cavalry that really excel in sustained engagements. Oh dear, they're really making their way in. Plus they found some of my undefended gates. Time to call in the artillery. The steam tank, now mounted with a volley gun in the hull, is this twist on a really beloved existing unit. Ah, here comes our navy. Hang on, there's no sea here. And we don't have a navy. And finally, we have the Marienburg class landship, which is this ridiculous boat on wheels with an extreme amount of firepower. Theodore, mate, I know you're on your last legs, but I need you back in the fight. Okay, okay, he's going down. But his Bale Flame amulet has other ideas. Come on, man, final push. In we go. Nope. Oh, okay then. Elspeth? It's up to you. The Empire flourishes. We've confederated some of our allies into our faction, increasing our new Imperial authority. And we've created a vast network of gardens across the rest. Completing tier 5 of the Gunnaroo School means we've unlocked the Amethyst Landship and the Purple Eclipse. Both will be powerful additions to our armies, once we find a new target to use them on. On the horizon, we see a new threat in the form of Tamakan, and perhaps yet, we'll find an ally in the Dwarves. Should probably drop off the crown if we want to make friends. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on the new additions. And don't forget to follow our links to find out more, including the extra campaign reworks we've added for Empire, Nurgle and Dwarves as part of Patch 5.0. Check out our Steam page to wishlist it now.